table mapping with the SharePoint connector. Hey, I'm Eric, and in this video, we're going to look at how to map tables in Business Central to folders in uh, SharePoint. I have already run through the, uh, the initial installation process, and with that, if I'm able to spell, I have actually received a bunch of table mappings because I answered yes to get a default table mapping. So I have already lots of table mapped. Um, but let's map another one to kind of show you what the process is of table mapping. So the first thing you do is that you go and select what table you want to map. And, and I think I'm going to add SharePoint uh, mapping to the bank accounts. So I'll find a bank account table, select that one. And then I'm going to decide on how do I want to map this table. Uh, and I, in the mapping method field, I have three options, but, but forget the last one. There's a separate video on that one. So we have two options. We have one called name number and one called reference number. And the difference is that name number is for static entities, something that, you know, we create, like we create a customer, then we don't really delete a customer or we don't really delete a bank account because there are transactions associated with it and so on. Uh, so it, it's a static link. The other one, the reference number method is for transactions, uh, data that can change. Um, and, and you can see the different usage in, on the existing tables in this list. Bank accounts, they don't change. So I'll go with name number. And let's put that into uh, a base folder called bank. So this is the folder that will hold the other folders, one for each bank account. I'll just call it bank right now. Um, then we have the option of alternative mappings. We're going to ignore that for just a second. Um, but we need to specify what fields to use for the caption. And the caption is the folder name. And in this case, I'm going to choose the name of the bank account. And you can also specify a caption specification. So like in case with, with customers, we use the name field for for the folder, but we also supplying the customer number field because there might be two customers with the same name. Um, if you're working, if you have Walmart as, as a customer, you might have a thousand customers called all called Walmart, and then in name two or somewhere else, you you figure out how, why they're different. So you can. But you don't want the same folder for all of them, so you need to have unique folders. Uh, and that's the purpose of the specification field. So in this case, I think I will also use, I'll use the bank account number, because then that's typically how accountants remember accounts. So um, that's it. I can also specify a parent table, meaning that whatever I'm working with is actually not residing in the root, of SharePoint, but it's residing somewhere else. Um, we can see the sales header and and posted sales invoice. They are actually rooted inside a customer. So whatever we're doing with a sales document, we put it in sales under the customer. We do not put it in sales at the root. Um, in this case, bank accounts, I think I'm going to put them in the root. So now I'm done here. I have added uh, the, the table mapping and I don't want, do not want to save any passwords and I can go to bank accounts. Um, we do not add the SharePoint box on list pages for, on most list pages anyway, for performance issues. So if we go into the checking account here, we can see that we now have the SharePoint box because this table has been mapped. And if I grab my selection of demo files, I can grab the baby pick and put that on the bank account. And we can use the, the functionality here to go and see how and where are we on SharePoint. And we can see where we are in documents, bank, worldwide bank, and the account number on here is our file. So, 
that is how you add new mapping to a uh, to a place in BC and 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 create the connection to SharePoint. The app knows most tables where somebody has ever wanted to add SharePoint mapping, but there might be other places to uh, that you suddenly want to add the SharePoint connector box or perhaps inside custom code. If that's the case, then you need to add a little piece of code enabling the box on that page. There's more information on our homepage on how to do that, and your partner can can certainly do that for you. That's the uh, that's the video on how to create uh, the simple table mapping in, uh, in the SharePoint connector. I hope you will try this out and let us know if there's anything we can help you with. Um, or check some of the other videos for all the other functionality that is in this app. Thanks for watching.